My name is Rick Adams and I'm the CEO and founder at Practical CSM. And Practical CSM is uh, principally around training and certification for customer success management. Our real focus is uh, on uh, training customer success managers into the role and certifying them as being professionally qualified to do their role. Churn can occur for a whole range of reasons, obviously, and some of them are, let's say, less of a concern than than others. Uh, Some of them might actually be what I will describe as natural. In other words, to be expected and you're not really going to do necessarily much about it. There's a sort of a cadence of churn based upon what it is that you sell, who you sell it to and what their requirements are. If your product is something that you feel your customers should be purchasing from you again and again and again, well then suddenly, that's repeat business, suddenly we're very interested in knowing, well, are they buying it from us again and again and again, or do they stop buying it from us when actually they they still have that need and that demand, in which case, why? Also, actually, one interesting one is is belief. Uh, Belief in you as an organization. So where are you headed as a company? So I've got to really believe in your success because your success is tied up in my success. Obviously, churn itself is a is a ratio. So the, the percentage of companies or customers who do churn, you know, compared to the ones who remain as customers and who renew. So you can do it as a you know as a churn ratio or a renewal ratio, whatever you want. And obviously, you know, the the higher the percentage who renew, the better. The lower the percentage who churn, the better. And the two should be the same. Uh, bearing in mind that what you're doing is you're only uh, looking at. Uh, your renewals, not net new business. Now, what it doesn't do necessarily, though, is indicate the revenues that you're getting from renewals. So that is where we need to just go to another level, which is the NRR, which is our net revenues. It's a great question, uh, and and I think it's a multi-layer answer. So I think generally customer experience is the responsibility of everybody. We've already said that one of the reasons why customers might leave us is yeah. poor customer experience, all right? If anyone is customer facing, then very much they are involved in making the customer's experience as good as possible. Anybody within the organization, whoever they may be, needs to have this sort of customer first sort of thinking. Yeah, I think that customer success actually you know, does have a specific part to play. Customer success is the bit that is post sale, I've, I've bought it, yeah. Now I need to get value out of it. That is a very important part mm-hmm. of the overall experience that a customer has. Yeah. It's not the whole of it, yeah. but it is an important part of it. And the customer success team should be making sure not just that customers get value out of product X, whatever they purchase was, but they know that they've got the value out of it. Yeah, well, I mean, analyzing churn is... is to be honest, it's fairly straight because it, it is a ratio. And of course, what we're looking for is, is direction of travel. So if you take that measurement you know, once ever, well, then it tells you something. So if we if we measure it today, we can say, well, today our, our churn is 15% or 10% or 3%. Like, what's really interesting to know is, well, is that a figure that's going up or going down? We want to know the the, the direction of travel that we're going in. It's this percentage of renewal or this percentage of churn. And the direction is we're getting less churn or more churn. You know, you will build and build and build. And so you can then look back over the historical data and do your trend line and extend it on into the future and and see where you think you're going to be based upon if this trend continues at the rate that it, it has been continuing for the last six months, then in six months time, we'll be here assuming, you know, nothing else goes wrong, assuming that the trend is going to continue. You should contact a number of your customers who did churn and a number of customers who did not churn and you should be getting their consent to interview them in depth to find out why they made the decisions that they made. In the moment that you are forming a business where renewals are going to be important to you is the moment when you need to be thinking about how you're going to get them. Yes, I think so. So I think I think that's a very 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 yeah valid point is that you you need to again if you're going to do well you have to understand your customer a price conscious customer you might deal with very differently to 
another segment where it's about quality. So for them, it might not be about the cost. It might be about the SLA. And now I've got two different conversations I'm going to be having. I'm going to be having a renewal conversation about how we're managing to keep costs absolutely to the bare minimum and how we're going to commit over this period to making sure that costs don't go above X. Or I got a conversation about, you know, what fantastic quality we're delivering and how it's best in class and how we're going to be guaranteeing that that quality remains the same over the next, you know, renewal period. In a sense, it's not rocket science, is it? In a sense, it's it's straightforward. Like, go and find what your customer wants and deliver that to them. Well, this is where you go to your data analytics and you you, you measure the data on an ongoing basis and you, you keep analyzing the data and looking at that direction. Remember, we talked about the direction of travel. Mm -hmm. Is it upwards or downwards? You know, where, where are we headed? Are they believing in us and our vision ongoing? Is our service friendly and efficient and effective all of these questions are the ones that we need to be asking ourselves not just once but you know on an ongoing basis and this is where we you know we look at the figures and if the figures are down we ask ourselves well why you know, is it external factors beyond our control if so what are we going to do about that or is it actually factors that are in our control in which case what are we going to do about those so we've got to continue to observe our customers, continue to observe ourselves, continue to take measurements, continue to analyze that data and turn the, the, the analysis into, into some meaningful criteria for, for executive decision making. I think the, the you know the biggest mistake is is to not do it or not do it enough or not or not do it well enough. Okay, I mean really that's the mistake, is to spend all your time doing what you need to do and none of it measuring what you're doing to find out if what you need to do, if the way you're doing it is effective. Yeah, you know, the next step then of course is is to actually you know, get some meaning out of it. Uh, if you if you do ITIL, which is uh, like a, a standard for service management, it's what they call CSI, continual service improvement. That's what we're, we're aiming for. We, we're, we're aiming for continual service improvement is we do it, we measure it, we analyze the measurements against our predictions and we then make a decision as to do we do more of it or do we change it. I think there are some things that, that you know, CS leaders are going to have a number of frustrations around churn and renewals. So there's going to be a, a bunch of stuff in the customer success department. My customers are telling me that the reason why they are churning is because they're going to brand X. And the, re and the reason they're going to brand X is because brand X has features A, B and C and we don't. This is where we then got to look at the senior management team of the of the of the organisation as a whole to see well how holistic are they in their in their approach to the organisation. So again, we've got to understand the motivations not just of our customers now, but also of our employees. If we're the senior decision makers, and we've got to make sure that we have a joined up vision of where we need to be going, and that everybody knows how they in their part of the organization how you know how they are pulling together to get us in that direction and if they're not if they're rowing in another direction like the like how i described there well then that has an impact on the business because we've got 75 percent of us rowing one way and 25 percent of us rowing the other way we actually only have a 50 percent effort towards our goal as opposed to a 100 percent effort towards our goal for example so collaborate work with not just inside customer success understand what you are doing how you can help do you know the vision for the company is it growth is it consolidation is it is it quality is it is it is it cost it, what is it we're trying to achieve here are we trying to have is it numbers of customers is it net new customers what are we trying to achieve then work out how can i as a cs leader create a customer success strategy to maximize my team's impact on that vision how can I work with and collaborate with all the other departments mm -hmm. to help them do the same? That is uh, what you want. And you're looking for, you know, the the win-win-win the all the way across.